as we just demonstrated, can you imagine what world we would live in had you known that you could rub raw hemp on your you know, injured knee and it would have immediate anti-inflammation and pain reducing treatment for you. No pharmaceutical drugs, no side effects. It's antibacterial, so even if you cut your, your leg, you would also be getting these benefits as well. Welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, the show that inspires, promotes, and gives you a daily dose of inspiration from the people who have used cannabis to change their lives in extraordinary ways. Here's your host, Justin Benton. Welcome back to the Miracle Plant Podcast, where we discuss this miracle plant with so many names and how it's helping people in so many extraordinary ways. Well, I'm back in the studio, which means I'm in my backyard in Southern California. It's a beautiful spring day, and I'm so excited to be talking to you uh, about this topic, cannabosum, that has just captivated me and so many others uh, to find out the you know the word cannabosum, its its roots in Hebrew. Uh, and the original text that uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, in fact, it was written in. And so, again, we want to talk a little bit, uh, bring you up to speed if this is uh, the first time you're hearing about this. Uh, both in the original, and this comes from Sula Benet, B-E-N-E-T, uh, and it's her work, The Early Diffusion and Folk Uses of Hemp, uh, back in 1967. And as she says here in her abstract, both in the original Hebrew text of the Old Testament and in the aromatic translation, the word kana, K-A-N-E-H, or kana, K-E-N-E-H, is used either alone or linked to the adjective blossom in Hebrew and busma in aromatic, meaning aromatic. (laughs) It is kana, C-A-N-A, in Sanskrit, or kunbu, Q-U-N-N-A-B-U in Assyrian and Keneb, K-E-N-E-B in Persian. Kanab, C-A-N-N-A-B in Aromatic or Kanbun, K-A-N-B-U-N. Uh, in Exodus 30, 23, God directed Moses to make a holy oil composed of myrrh, sweet cinnamon, cannabosum, and cassia. In many ancient languages, including Hebrew, the root can, K-A-N, has a double meaning, both hemp, and read. How interesting. In many translations of the Bible's original Hebrew, we found cannabosum variously and erroneously translated as calamus, an aromatic reed. A vague term calamus, calamus aromaticus, is a vagrant marsh plant. The error occurred in the oldest Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, the Septuagint in the 3rd century B.C., where the terms canna and cannabosum were incorrectly translated as calamus. And in many translations that followed, including Martin Luther's, the same error was repeated in Exodus 30, 23. Cannabosum is translated as sweet calamus. In Isaiah 43, 24, canna is translated as sweet cane, although the word sweet appears nowhere in the original. In Jeremiah 6.20, canna is translated as sweet cane. In Ezekiel 27.19, canna is translated as calamus. In Song of Songs 4.14, canna is translated in calamus. This has all happened when the Greek, the oldest known uh, Greek version uh, from translation from uh, Hebrew and Aramaic um, translation was when that uh, error occurred. It also says uh, in Sula's piece, Another piece of evidence regarding the use of the word canna in the sense of hemp rather than reed among the Hebrews as the religious requirement that the dead be buried in canna shirts. Uh, And so that is even further proof that cannabosum is in fact cannabis or hemp. And literally canna uh, is translated to the word hemp. So why do we bring this up? Well, the reason that we bring this up is that when you look at the original text, um, as we talked about here with Moses being given the recipe for the holy anointing oil, uh, it talks about um, six and a half liters roughly, or 250 shekels at the time, of cannabosum. 
So in this holy anointing oil that was reserved back 2,800 years ago just for high priests and then later for kings, um, you know, Jesus, who was uh, a Jewish rabbi, uh, saw the error of this ways. And so he took the anointing oil that was reserved for high priests and kings and he started to give it to everyone. So not only Jewish um, you know, followers, but also to giving it to the Gentiles and the Sumerians and everybody. Everybody was welcome in the church of Jesus. And again, that's why the high priests of Judaism were so upset. One of the many reasons, but that was a very critical reason, was that um, you know Jesus was speaking and, and breaking bread and helping um, and preaching to Gentiles or non-Jewish people. And so again, this cannabosum, where he went out with his mission and his 12 disciples, uh, it was a, was a part of the healing mission. The anointed oil, Messiah means the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. Uh, you know, there's plenty of, of evidence, even in the Gospel of Thomas, and some of the Gospels that didn't make it, uh, didn't make the cut in 367, uh, when the Roman uh, Empire uh, decided which parts of the Bible were going to be left in and which parts were going to be left out. But in those parts, it talks about that even a baptism included an anointing. And so lots of the original you know, times and what actually happened when Jesus was here on this earth have been edited or censored or mistranslated or uh, just not accurate as far as the importance of the anointing, which you know Jesus was from Nazareth, and that's how he was referred to until he was anointed, you know, with this holy anointed oil himself, you know, with John. And a lot of us think of baptism when we think of water, but it was meant for both a water as a cleansing, and then the anointing to become a Christ, which later um, developed into the word Christians because that was the plural term in Greece. So I know these are a lot of heavy topics. And uh, it's, but it's, we, someone needs to talk about it because at the end of the day, um, these are the facts. Again, this is by Sula Bonet. She is the one who, uh, 1967, is a Polish anthropologist, uh, showed all of this information of how it exactly um, is translated from those original texts. And so, again, that's why we want to talk about it here is to make sure that you guys are exposed to it. And that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, is show you this information and teach you what is the truth about this miracle plant with so many names. As you can see, with all the different translations, uh, it does have a lot of different names. But the most important part is that we talk about, um, you know, that it was used, you know, for, th for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it has many, many medicinal benefits. And it's helped with burns and it's helped with cuts and it's helped with uh, you know, it's been a part of, um, you know, a healing journey and a healing plant for, you know, we have it dating back 8,000 years uh, in medical oriental uh, journals as well. So, again, we're talking here uh, about Sula Bonet and Cannabosum and uh, the Gospel of Philip uh, is a very powerful gospel that was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And the Dead Sea Scrolls were these other gospels um, of the times of Jesus, you know, firsthand accounts um, that were written down, you know, um, over time. And they're dating back, you know, to this, this you know, the era of Jesus. Um, you know, we're talking, you know, uh, they were discovered in 14, uh, 1945 uh, by some farmers looking for some fertilizer. Uh, and, and then it was, it was the first time that we've had access to firsthand accounts of the times of Jesus. And in these first time, first hand accounts, you know, specifically when we're talking about, um, you know, the gospel of Philip, I can read you some of it here. Uh, that's the book that we've talked to before, uh, which is uh, Chris Bennett's book, uh, which is called Sex, Drugs, Violence, and the Bible, along with Neil McQueen and Ford by Richard Cohen. It talks about instead of the Gnostic uh, tractate, the gospel of Philip uh, records, records that, the anointing, uh, parentheses, chrisma, is superior to the baptism. For the anointing, we were called the anointed ones, Christians, not because of the baptism. And Christ was also 
uh, named because of the anointing for the Father anointed the Son and the Son anointed the Apostles and the Apostles anointed us. He, therefore, who has been anointed has the all. He has the resurrection, the light, the cross, the Holy Spirit. Through the text, light is associated with the chrism. And it is stated that if one receives this unction, which is this oil, this person is no longer a Christian, but a Christ. This is the gospel of Philip. Similarly, the gospel of truth records that Jesus specifically came into their midst so that he might anoint them with the anointment. The anointment is the mercy of the Father. Those whom he has anointed are ones who have been perfect. The anointing with oil has also greater representation than baptism in, in Gnosis, which is the Gnostics, is even regarded as more significant. This association is linked up with the name of Christ or the Anointed One or even the Messiah in Greek, um, you know, translation. So again, you know, again, we're just trying to break the facts down for you so you can look this up, go look, you can go Google the Gospel of Philip and you'll see this. You can go Google Sula Bonet. Uh, and you can look at her works, you know, with the early diffusion and folk uses of hemp. My main point is, you know, the most influential book ever written, and, and likely the most influential man who's ever walked this earth, Jesus Christ, uh, used cannabis, used hemp in their, in their daily lives, in their spiritual and physical healing um, of people. And it was, it was used by you know, millions and millions and millions of people over the years for anything from, like I said, cuts or burns or pains or headaches or uh, antibacterial purposes. I mean, it, it truly is a miracle plant. And as you've heard us talk on this podcast many times with many different stories and many different diagnoses with many incredible miracles that we've seen, uh, again, we are just pointing out the facts because as we know, there is so much against this miracle plant. Uh, you know, back in 1937, there was an America, we passed a, a marijuana tax act, which was a made up word again, you know, talk about so many names. Um, that was a Mexican slang term that was used to, to scare and there was political reasons to outlaw uh, marijuana. Um, you know, there's pharmaceutical reasons and they also outlawed hemp, which even George Washington and Thomas Jefferson grew hemp as a cash crop. And Thomas Jefferson said that hemp was a matter of national security because it had so many uses and that every farmer back in those days had to grow at least one acre of hemp. It was required by law in America that you had to grow at least one acre of hemp. So because it had so many uses and we had to have that national security of that powerful, powerful miracle plant. So again, we're talking about the history of this miracle plant and how, how prevalent it has been in, in, in our journey as, as humans on this planet. And it has been misconstrued. It has been demonized. You have been lied to about this plant. It has been censored. It has been edited out, as we just demonstrated. Can you imagine what world we would live in had you known that you could rub raw hemp on your you know injured knee and it would have immediate anti-inflammation and pain reducing treatment for you. No pharmaceutical drugs, no side effects. It's antibacterial, so even if you cut your, your leg, you would also be getting these benefits as well. This plant, like I said, is a part of the, the most you know printed book we have on this planet and it is all over the book especially in the original texts you know the hebrew texts and and everything until they translate it over to greek um, and again that's why i want to keep talking about this because i'm not hearing anyone else talk about it and it's like in the beginning when i when i saw the power of this miracle plant and how it helped heal my son from a severe diagnosis of autism and nobody knew that about it back then uh, there was very limited, re, uh, you know, research or just, it just wasn't a lot of information out there, especially in the United States, um, that I just made it my mission to pay it forward. And that was seven or eight years ago. And, and actually it's Shay's birthday tomorrow. He turns 11. So we're going to go have a birthday party with his, his baseball buddies and uh, at the golf and stuff out here in Ventura. And, uh, you know, do some putt-putt and some go-karts and some video games and, and all that fun stuff. So, 
uh, it was my mission to pay it forward uh, and, and teach people just about cannabidiol, which we call CBD, which comes from cannabis or hemp, which is non-psychoactive, will not get you high. Uh, and I developed a raw version of this oil or unction that I gave to my son uh, to help clear uh, the, uh, the fog of his severe um, you know, mental uh, you know, neurological diagnosis. So again, I'm hopping on here. I'm going to keep talking about this topic because I don't hear anyone else talking about it. And hopefully this uh, will intrigue you to, to go to Dr. Google or, or, you know, you can go check out AI and ask them about it. Uh, you know, my preferred, obviously, AI is ClickMind AI. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, go do, so do your own research. It's out there. The facts are out there. Um, th there's no disputing what everything that I read from you is directly from either the gospel of Philip or the Bible uh, and the original texts uh, that came out. And now you're hearing from Sula Benet that the word was translated and hidden from us. Whether it was on purpose or not, I have my beliefs, but it was hidden. And now it's time to shine the light on the truth. I forget who it was that said it, but I loved it. When I heard it, they said, the truth just sounds right when you hear it. And doesn't it sound right that something called cannabosum that was used in the you know, earliest text 2,800 years ago when the burning bush spoke to Moses to give him the recipe for the holy anointing oil that, that the cannabosum is cannabis. I mean, and it's Sula Bonet had proven there. So this plant has been a part of our uh, you know, healing and, uh, and anointing and just amazing things. It's been a part of our history. And you need to know the facts. You need to know the truth. This plant is not here to harm you. This plant is here to help you. And it's been used in helping uh, humans for thousands of years. Uh, now we need to um, allow it to, to help someone. Because you know someone right now who's struggling with a health ailment. We all do. Um, and this plant can help because it helps our bodies find what's called homeostasis or balance. Our bodies have, every mammal has what's called an endocannabinoid system. Uh, meaning that our bodies are creating our own cannabinoids like CBD. And when our body makes it, it's called 2-AG. But we can also find these cannabinoids in, in, in plants like kale, like broccoli. And that cannabidiol, which is we abbreviated for CBD, um, helps, uh, you know, enrich or, 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 you know, gives the nutrients to fill up the endocannabinoid system. And that endocannabinoid system helps balance all the other physical systems in your body. So regardless of whatever the issue is, it's like the puppet master, right? And there's nine puppets. And each one of those nine puppets is a major you know, system like respiratory, circulatory, skeletal, you know, hormonal, uh, and, and endocrine. And so it, it's when you have the puppet master that's healthy, it can make sure all those other systems are balanced and healthy as well. And so that's why this plant is so powerful and why we've heard so many beautiful, amazing, miraculous stories is because this plant helps our bodies find balance. And that's when the, the reduces the inflammation or it, it helps with the stress and the popcorn brain that we get. Uh, and it helps with sleep and the circadian rhythms to find that deep sleep. You know, we need that four hours of REM, continuous sleep for our bodies to find homeostasis, to recharge. Uh, you know, many of us need more than four hours. Um, you know, person, I'm a seven or eight myself. But, but again, this miracle plant helps and helps our bodies find balance, helps our brains helps our nerve endings. Um, that's why we've seen so many amazing things. And I just want to, 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 to spur a conversation with you. And I, I want to challenge you to try some products. Try some, we would always recommend trying whole plant, raw plants. Eat the plant, don't heat the plant. The plant is meant uh, you know, to be, our bodies are meant to set up to consume it in its natural form. That our, the plant, cannabis or hemp, uh, makes uh, it's called uh, cannabidiolic acid or CBDA, and then unfortunately, um, people for you know whatever reason um, they burn the plant to extract it, and they burn off the A and turn CBDA, which the plant makes, and then they turn it into CBD, which the human makes. Well, as we all know, Dr. Raphael Mishulam, who's the the godfather of cannabinoid medicine, 
uh, he proved that CBDA, raw CBD that the plant makes, is up to a thousand times more effective than isolated, human heated, uh, over processed CBD, which makes sense, right? If you were just to take a bite out of a fresh organic apple you picked in your backyard, your body would know exactly how to use all those live enzymes and those nutrients and get it dispersed all through your system in your body because that's, that's how we've made it you know, for millions of years on this planet. Whereas if you took that apple and you cooked it down and you processed it and you bleached it and you turned it into like you know, a, a vitamin you know, C or, or, or some type of one molecule from the apple, and you give it to your body, your body doesn't know what to do with that. That's not natural. It's not normal. Our bodies, they'll get something out of it, I'm sure, but a lot of it will just pass through because your, our bodies are not set up to receive single molecule, uh, you know, compounds. And that is the pharmaceutical model. And that's why there are so many side effects. And that's why there isn't as much that works uh, when it comes to doing that type of medicine because it's not natural. It's, we didn't evolve with single molecule compounds. Um, you know, we evolved with plants. We evolved with nature. Uh, we evolved with this plant. In fact, we have evidence that this plant and humans uh, have been in contact and we've been using it in the beginning of farming for 30,000 years. Uh, that we would take it with us nomadically wherever we lived or moved, uh, cannabis or hemp, which is the same thing. Uh, cannabis is the name of the plant. Hemp is if it's low in uh, you know, THC and high in CBD, uh, like we're talking about, or CBDA. And then that marijuana word is just a made-up word that an arbitrary number of 0.3% THC and above uh, is, is, is considered marijuana. And the marijuana, if you have a lot of THCA and you burn off the THCA, it turns into THC delta 9 and that has some type of intoxicating effects, which again is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about eating a raw hemp plant with high in CBDA or, or cold pressing it like we do and getting all of the health benefits uh, and all of these incredible uh, healing benefits that we've seen here at the Miracle Podcast. So I wanted to come on, just talk a little bit with you guys today. If you have any questions, do send us an email. Uh, probably the best email for me is info at the miracle plant dot o r g and any questions you have if you want to be a guest uh, if you have uh, any other ideas or topics that you want to cover if you want us to go further into this particular topic then we're always happy uh, to make sure that we can hear those questions and we can answer those questions and that you uh, can learn all that you want to learn about this miracle plant with so many names. So that's it for today. I'm super excited that we had a chance to talk about this, cannabosum, and how important it was in the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Gospel of Philip and and the Gospel of Thomas and and those Dead Sea Scrolls. I challenge you to all read more about them. I mean, if you're you're a Christian or, or if you think Jesus was a cool dude and you want to know more, there's more firsthand account of his time here on earth. Uh, that was uh, discovered in 1945 and 46 in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And you can see what the literal, tra- literal translations were and, and learn more for yourself about what was going on. And of course, we're just focusing on one aspect, which is really that cannabis or cannabosum or hemp uh, was a part of uh, Jesus' ministry. And it was a part of, of you know, uh, his healing mission to heal the world, just as our mission is to reach a billion people by 2025 about the power of this miracle plant, especially in the raw forum. So at the end of every podcast, we say heal the world, because as you know, that is the mission here at the Miracle Plant Podcast. So again, on the count of three, let's say heal the world and send out those vibes to those people out there that need it, that are looking for a miracle, and then they can hear this podcast or they can, you can forward this podcast to them or you can review this podcast so more people can find it. Uh, Again, we just want to share the truth about this miracle plant so others can find it, try it, and have their miracle. And even if all their miracle is, is a good night's sleep or recovering from an injury um, without side effects or harmful pills or things of that nature, that can be a miracle in and of itself. So on the count of three, let's say heal the world, everybody. Ready? One, two, three. Heal the world!
Thanks for swinging by the Miracle Plant Podcast. We will see you next week. Same time, same bat channel, and happy healing. Be a blessing, everybody. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. Season one of Dope History is now available at dopehistory.com. Dope History weaves you through the lives of those who have been touched by cannabis or have had an influence on the events that shaped our laws or relationships with this plant. You'll hear tales from Frenchie Cannoli, Keith Strop, Eddie Lepp, Tom Alexander, Ed Rosenthal, Wolf Seagull, Jorge Cervantes, and Tommy Chong. Available now at dopehistory.com.